interrupting the show for a special report. Because now it is time for Bag Lab. All right, tonight's Bag Lab is using this chickadee backpack as an inspiration. As you can see, that this particular chickadee has flying geese on the front pocket as well as going across the top of the bag. And Michelle Tripp made this bag from Bear Boo Boo Designs. Um, I've linked to her website in the description. And flying geese are just an extra special touch, combining a little bit of quiltiness into your project. And Danny's gonna put a picture up on the screen of another project that Michelle made. This is the Sprinkles Baking Tote from Minikin Season 4. And um, as you can see, Michelle put flying geese on both of the sides and has that focal print in the middle. So just another way that you can combine some flying geese into your next project. So um, I love foundation paper piecing. So that's what we're going to be talking about today as far as the flying geese go. Let me give you one more look at the chickadee. And then Danny's gonna switch to the overhead camera and we'll talk about some flying geese. So I put together a PDF document with three different sizes of flying geese. And of course, if you needed smaller or, lar or larger than what I have represented here, you could always print them at a different percentage on your printer. And um, if you've never done foundation paper piecing before, this is a great way to start just because there's only three different pieces in each flying geese. So you'll be sewing however many of these together as you need for your project and um, adding some fabric on the sides, top and bottom, um, like Michelle did for um, that chickadee backpack. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through two different sort of versions of putting these together. The first version will be no extra supplies needed. Um, and I'll be making the geese a second time with some sort of extra tools that will make the job a little bit easier, um, like a light pad, the add a quarter inch ruler, and a seam roller. So the first time I'm going to make it um, just basics, what everyone should have in their home, and I'm going to demonstrate the, the biggest geese on the page. And again, you can find this, uh, the link to this in the description with this printable document. So I'm going to start off by cutting out, you'll notice there's a black line around this rectangle. I'm gonna give myself like a little bit of extra room around the black line, just for a little wiggle room. And first off, I'm not a professional at foundation paper piecing. I just, I enjoy working on foundation paper piecing in my spare time. Um, some people like to cut their fabric pieces to mimic um, the segments on the paper. Just because I'm not doing it a whole lot, I kind of like to cut my fabric pieces with an abundance of room. And so what I usually like to do is take my ruler, I'll lay it down on the piece that I need to cut the fabric for, and then I'll cut it way bigger than the piece is necessary. So I'm gonna take my ruler over here. I'm gonna lay it down on piece number one. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go for seven inches by four inches to cut my fabric because that will leave me enough room um, to cut my triangle over here with extra space just because you will be attaching the fabrics together and same thing for two and three i'm going to be cutting and i've cut out my fabrics before the show so i cut out another thing to mention when measuring two and three i'm not going to be me measuring it straight up and down like a rectangle i'm going to be measuring it sort of um, on a diagonal like this, just because that's how the piece will go when it's sewn together. And if you've never foundation paper piece before, you'll see in a minute what I mean by that. But here's my fabrics. I'm gonna use pink fabrics for two and three. And for piece number one, I'm gonna use yellow, bright yellow. Okay, so this is the lo-fi version. I'm gonna start off by flipping my printed numbers so that they're face down. I'm gonna make sure my piece number one, which is what I'm starting with, I'm gonna make sure my fabric covers basically the entire piece, and it does there. And then I'm gonna take some cardstock. And we're next gonna be attaching fabric to segment number two. So I'm gonna take my cardstock, and this is, you can use Quilter's Template Plastic. I'm using one of my comic book boards that I fold my fabric on. I'm just gonna line it up with the 
with a line between one and two. And then I'm just gonna fold that back. Okay, so keeping the fabric in place, I'm gonna flip it back over and you can see my, my fold over here. I'm going to line the fabric up because when the fabric's attached, it's going to cover this segment over here. So I'm going to line it up so it's positioned here because what that does is once I sew it in place, I'm going to flip it. So the reason I cut my fabrics way larger than necessary is because when you're sewing these in place, the fabric has to cover this entire piece. You can't be short by say like this much because then you'll have um, basically a gap. You won't have any fabric there when you're completing your block. So it's really important to fully finish and cover the second section, section number two. Um, I used my regular printer paper to print this out. Some people like to use um, something lighter, um, but I find that just regular copy paper works fine for me. And on my sewing machine, I'm also going to be sewing this with a shorter stitch length. So on my machine, I'm going to be sewing with 1.5 millimeter stitch length. And the reason that we're sewing this with a shorter stitch length is we need the stitches to perforate the paper so that when we fold the paper and tear it away, kind of like a, an old fashioned stamp because they're not per perforated anymore. They're pretty much stickers. Um, we need it to perforate, but we don't want it to, the stitch length to be too small because if it's too small, it will actually perforate while you're sewing. So um, you want it to be small, but um, kind of just the right size. Um, also, I'm going to be using 50 weight Oracle thread. You can also use 80 weight thread for a thinner thread. Um, a recommendation if you wanted to use 80 weight thread is Wonderful Deco Bob thread, but again, I'm gonna use Orifil 50 weight thread for this. So I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and you can use some pins if you wish to hold the fabric in place so it doesn't bunch up um, underneath your needle. But I had a mishap with locating my sewing pins earlier today, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hold it in place with my hand and I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine. Okay, so I'm gonna be sewing down the line that's connecting piece one and two because that's the piece I added. I added piece two this time. Um, I am going to start and stop the stitches um, before it hits the seam allowance. This dashed line over here is the quarter of an inch seam allowance. So the fabric still needs to cover this area, but I don't necessarily want my stitches through this area because it can create a lot of bulk. And I'm actually going to I personally prefer to have a little back stitch just so when I'm perforating my paper, um, my stitches don't start to come undone on the ends. Okay, so I've got my second piece attached. I'm gonna go back over to my cutting mat. And since, since this is the lo-fi version, um, I'm just going to use my scissors to eyeball. I'm going to move the paper out of the way. And I'm going to use my scissors just to eyeball a quarter of an inch, and I'm just going to trim that. Okay, so next, I'm going to flip this page back, and it barely just covers that little tip of the, the paper over here, which is good enough since I kind of rough cut it a little bit larger than I'll need. You'll take your iron and rather than moving the iron back and forth, you'll just kind of lay it on top just to avoid stretching out the fabric. And now we're gonna add fabric three over here, which I've chosen another pink fabric. So again, I'm going to go ahead and fold, fold the paper along the line. And then that will create a, a crease over here, which you can clearly see. And next I'm gonna add my third piece so that it just covers that crease. You can eyeball it approximately a quarter of an inch. And then I'm gonna take this back over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew this line that's connecting piece one and piece three. 
Okay, and I should mention I was really careful not to cross my first line of stitching. Um, again, that's just to avoid some extra bulk. And same as before, I'm gonna move the paper just out of the way. And then I'm gonna cut these two fabrics, the seam that I just sewed, approximately a quarter of an inch. And as you can see, this method does waste a little bit of fabric, but I just like the peace of mind of having a little bit extra so that I know that I'm covered. Okay, so now I'm going to take, you'll take your iron, just kind of set it down like that, and then this block is done. So what's left for this block is to trim it. So I'm gonna take my ruler and my rotary cutter and we're going to be trimming, we're not trimming the dash line, we're trimming the outer solid line over here um, because this area is the seam allowance, which we need to keep. So I'm just going to take my ruler, line it up with the line, and cut all four edges. And that'll finish one of the geese. And depending on your project, how many pieces you'll need, you might need to assemble several pieces of the geese. So there's another method of foundation paper piecing that you actually don't sew through fabric or don't sew through paper at all. And that's the method using freezer paper. I've actually not done that method before, but I've linked to that method in the description. My friend at Brian House Quilts has a blog post tutorial on how to use the freezer paper method. Um, so I've linked to that in case you're interested in that, but this is what the block finishes out as. And let me show you sort of, that was the lo-fi method. Now let me show you the method with some extra tools in it. So we'll start off again with the black. I'm gonna cut it, rough cut it just around the outer solid black line. <clears throat> and for this second method, I'll be using my light pad and I'll also be showing the add a quarter ruler and my seam roller. So here's my LED light pad, which it's on. I don't know if it's showing up on camera that it's on, but I demonstrated this on the show, I think a couple years ago, and this is really helpful for laying out your pieces and seeing the lines through. Um, I don't think that's, I don't think that's showing up too well. Let me try to dim the light a little bit. Okay. Danny, if you zoom out, can you see like the number? There we go. Perfect. Thanks, Danny. Okay, we're going to have the low light on the cameras just for this part of the demonstration. So I'm going to lay my fabric on top, and as you can see, you can perfectly see the lines. So I'm going to add my second piece over here, and again, I just want it to slightly overlap the line by about a quarter of an inch. And as you can see, once I added the second piece of fabric, uh, I could see less, but um, I saw it long enough to, to lay my piece of fabric down. Actually gonna shift it up over here. Okay, so same as before, I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew directly on top of the line. Thanks, Danny. Okay, so I'm gonna move that um, light pad out of the way just because I think you get the idea. Um, it's super helpful with foundation paper piecing. Let me get that turned off. Okay, so the other tool that I wanted to mention is the add a quarter ruler. These come in different sizes and um, I just happen to have the 12, 12 inch long size and it basically has a, I don't know if this is gonna show up on camera, Probably not. There's sort of like a little ledge over here. There we go. I think you can see it now. There's like a ledge over here and this kind of, perfect, thanks Danny. This kind of hooks over the edge of the fabric and allows you to get a, a quarter inch cut, which is helpful for lining up the fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my comic book board and here's the piece, the two pieces that I, I just added, number one and two. I'm gonna go ahead and fold my, fat, my paper back along that comic book board, and then I'm gonna go ahead and that ruler just kind of, the ledge kind of fits right over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this back. 
And now this is exactly a quarter of an inch. I am going to use uh, the seam ripper, I'm sorry, seam roller, not seam ripper. So instead of ironing, especially if you're using a lot of pieces, sewing a lot of pieces, the seam roller is really helpful because you don't have to keep standing up, walking over to your iron, coming back over here. You can just go ahead and roll it. Basically, it's a finger press in the form of uh, a roller. Okay, so I'm going to add my third piece over here. Assuming I've got my light pad on and you get the idea. I'm going to take this back over to the sewing machine, sew this, and that will finish the block. So after you've got your blocks finished, you need to assemble them because you'll just have blocks like we have here. I'm going to cut this one. Um, actually, I'm going to rotary cut this one really quick. I'm going to use two of these blocks, um, which is I chose bigger blocks just to kind of fill the space with less less piecing, but you can use the smaller flying geese if you like to have a lot of them. Um, that chickadee backpack was made using the smaller flying geese. So I'll show you how to sew these together just so we can deal with removing the paper. And then I'll be adding fabric borders to the top, bottom, and the sides so that I have a big enough piece for my pattern piece. So that chickadee backpack um, the front pocket pattern piece. Um, I'm going to be using this to assemble a fabric panel that's big enough to cover this piece. Okay, so I've got my two flying geese. I'm going to be sewing these right sides together. And I'm just going to go ahead and use my wonder clips to pin these in place. So it's really helpful to have this dashed line over here because this is the seam allowance. And I'm actually going to be stitching directly on top of the line. And I'm going to be sewing from one end to the other. I'm not going to stop where the dashed lines stop just because now this is the block and we're going to be sewing this together. So I'm going to leave my stitch length at the one and a half millimeters just so it continues to perforate the paper. And let's take this over to the sewing machine. Okay, so it's now time to remove the paper. So I'm actually gonna take my seam roller and just press the seam open. There we go. Okay, so all you have to do to remove the paper is just fold it. Because we use that smaller stitch length, it'll just perforate and you can pull it free. And like I mentioned, I'm, I'm not a paper piecing expert. I just like to work on it in my spare time so if you are working on lots of foundation paper piecing and have any great tips, helpful tips and tricks, let us know in the comments so we can check out some of your, your tips for making paper piecing easier. Do you like using copy paper? Do you like using freezer paper? Let me know in the comments. We, I also have fusible Printable paper in the shop. Um, it's been some time since I've demonstrated it, but basically it takes out the process of removing this paper away. Uh, because the papers are water soluble, basically you leave these printed papers in your quilt until you wash it and then they dissolve when you wash the quilt. Okay, so there's all the papers removed. Now, because I need to fill this paper pattern piece, which is, you know, this obviously is too small. So I'm going to add some fabric to the bot top and bottom of my flying geese piece. I'm just going to sew both of these right sides together using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Actually, Danny, could you zoom out for just a second? And then I'm also going to add fabric to both of the side edges, again, using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I guess I'll do that right now. So I'll go ahead and flip this use my pins and then I'll add a little fabric strip. Again, I cut my fabric strips way bigger than I needed just because I wanted the freedom sort of to 
to lay out my geese, kind of move them maybe to the right side or to the left side. Okay, so I'm gonna sew both of these in place using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and then I'm gonna trim these fabrics even with my geese. Okay, I'm gonna move back to my regular stitch length on my machine that's two and a half millimeters, just because we don't have to perforate any paper anymore. Okay, so here's my unit so far. I'm actually going to take my rotary cutter and trim the fabric so that it's even with the geese. Of course, you want to press these seams, um, pressing them open is fine. And now I'm going to add some fabric to both of the side edges. And again, my fabrics are not as tall as the geese, but they are as tall as the pattern piece. So. I'm going to go ahead and add fabric to the right and left side by sewing right sides together. Same thing on this side. And again, this is going to be a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now it's time to trim this down to size. So I'm gonna take my paper pattern piece and I'm actually gonna go ahead and lay it down so that it's in the center of the point for the geese. Again, you'll wanna make sure this, these seams are pressed open. I'm gonna take my friction pen and I'm just gonna go ahead and draw around the pattern piece. And when I'm working with a pattern piece, normally I'm folding the fabric in half and aligning this piece on the fold, but for this particular piece, just because I wanted to get everything centered, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a little vertical line on top and bottom just so I can get it centered. And then I'm gonna go ahead and flip it and draw the other half. Okay, so I'm gonna use my fabric scissors and I'm gonna cut out this piece. And again, I only use two geese for this demonstration, but obviously if you had the smaller geese, you could have, um, Michelle's backpack had six geese on the front. So it just depends on how big your geese are and what kind of an area that you need to fill. All right, so here's my flying geese assembled, and next I'll just be attaching this to the interfacing as called for in the pattern. So I'm gonna have Danny post um, Michelle's um, sprinkles baking tote one more time so that you can see the geese. All right, there they are. As you can see, those geese are quite small on that particular project. And I'm gonna have them switch back to the overhead camera again so you can see the chickadee backpack. Here's the flying geese. Again, here's that front pocket, which is the same piece that I used in the demonstration, and here's some more flying geese, um, a strip across the front. So you'll just be adding fabric to the sides depending on your placement of geese. So in Michelle's backpack, she had a strip of fabric on this side, and this has kind of like a larger strip, so it's a little bit off center. So um, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration about flying geese. Danny, were there any questions during the demonstration? Um. About the geese, I mean. <laughs> 
Uh, Tamara says, foundation paper piecing for me, still learning, is one of those things where I tell myself, don't think, just do, uh, to not overthink it. Yeah, I think it's really easy to overthink this type of project. And I think personally for, if you've always wanted to try foundation paper piecing, I mean, these geese are what you should try first. Cause like I said, there's only three pieces. Some of the quilt patterns that I've worked on with like lots of little pieces, a section might have like 20 different little pieces in it. So, you know, these flying geese, it's only three and it's a great way to start. And there's Michelle Tripp. Thanks Michelle for your awesome Trigetti backpack that you made. Um, Michelle says, I don't have a light panel like you, Sarah, but instead I use a window in my house, a bright day helps. Even if you don't have all the fancy tools, when there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for the tip about that too, Michelle. A bright window is a great replacement for the light pad and you know, everyone has a window, so that'll be free. All right, was that it on the questions, Danny? 